Are we on Saturday? No. Oh, We're on Sunday, oh, okay. June 25th. Truth. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> June 25th. Sunday. Sunday. Uranus again in Taurus, now squaring off with Mars in Leo. And then Uh-oh. Mercury in Gemini, squaring off with Neptune in Pisces. So a couple days ago, when we go back to what was that that was on tuesday june 20th when the moon in a position of power in the sign that it rules cancer aligning with neptune in the sign that it rules pisces now we have mercury in the sign that it rules gemini aligning with neptune and pisces so two planets in the signs that they rule but they're squaring off with each other this is creating maybe some confusion confusion with your intuition is not being backed up by the facts or there's too much talking going on and it's not really being compassionate enough with what you're saying uh too many words maybe needs to be more silent and feeling finding the balance between those two it's kind of awkward energy Mercury squaring Neptune in the signs that they rule. Well, what if it's like the the curiosity you're having with your conscious mind into your unconscious is very, it can just be very uncomfortable. Whatever you are unearthing there is not pretty. Yeah, you're at, you're, you're at war with yourself inside your mind or... You're beating yourself up in some way. Oh, yeah. Are yeah, you, totally. Is, is it an internal confusion? Is it an external confusion? I think the best way to work through this energy is to take things a little slower today, pause, and give yourself a chance to take time to articulate your thoughts Ask questions when you're not clear. And when you're asking the question, do it compassionately rather than aggressively. But the challenge is, is with Mars squaring Uranus, the god of war and the planet of rebellion, it's creating a lot lot of agitation. There may be strain or tension between what's in your heart and your values. (sighs) Your sense of independence and feeling connected to others through it's, the by sharing your warmth it's always hard it's, when those things don't quite match up mm-hmm. or when or especially when you first real when you're realizing that they're not matching up and you're going to have to make a change so maybe this is like a preemptive discomfort of realizing that things aren't quite working in the way that you actually value so you're going to have to take some action to change it. And that's scary. There might be some, there might be, this might be like a temper tantrum day. Mm-hmm. Where you're not getting what you want. And so you throw a fit about it. And then after you've thrown the fit, you realize that you're actually are getting what you want, but you just didn't understand it, but you were confused about something. And so you freaked out about something that you thought you knew, but you didn't know. And so you overreacted. You get this I mean, confu- I mean, just the other day, I swear, this guy that I'm seeing was like, you're kind of having like a temper tantrum. Like I wasn't throwing like a fit fit, you know, we were just talking about something, but I was like, I had had a long week, week with my mom and then I came back to LA and like, I always want affection. That makes me feel like nurtured, but he was having a long week. So he doesn't feel affectionate because he's overwhelmed. And I was like, Earlier in the day, I didn't say anything because he was like super overwhelmed. And like at the end of the night, I was just like, just I could just start to feel it where I was like, that would feel really nice for me because then I could not think about all my other shit that I've been stressing about. That would just feel very comforting. But I already knew he was like not having it that day. I could just tell. And he mm-hmm. was like, what's wrong? And of course, I'm like, nothing. It's fine. Like, I was just like, it's not the day to bring it up. Like, he already doesn't feel good. What am I going to really say? We've already talked about this. It's a mismatch in this moment. We're both feeling yeah. depleted. Yeah. And he was like, you know, don't 
it's fine. Just tell me what the thing is. I already know something's wrong. So I'm just like trying to be logical, even though I was feeling really emotional. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, you know, I know you already don't feel good. So you're not feeling affectionate, but I want affection because I'm really tired and that's what I want. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we kind of like talked it through and he was like, well, it's just kind of like you're having you know, an internal temper tantrum because you're not getting what you want and I can't give it to you right now. And it was just a really, it like taking stock of it was really like, I'm not getting what I want in this moment. And that is upsetting. Like I mm-hmm. always want what I want and I want it right now. Mm-hmm. But like acknowledging those thoughts and emotions in a more logical sense mm-hmm. to be able to, in the end, be like, okay, well, we're both having bad days. I'm also probably just really tired, like just analyzing why the feelings are coming up, why they're feeling so overwhelming in this moment, you know, what is happening with each of us so we can be more compassionate. Yes. And being like, oh, you know, the next day it's like, okay, well, maybe affection is better early in the morning time because my day isn't ruined yet with work. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) figuring out how to work together and also just not take things personally when they're not about us, just... I don't know, the idea of analyzing the discomfort can make it more palatable and understand what's what's going on. Mm, I like that. Without it becoming like a fight. Starting the conversation, having the conversation. How are you feeling? And then in the end, he's like, well, this would have been an issue if you would have brought it up during the time that I was having a meltdown earlier. But like, I'm telling you, I have the bandwidth to talk about it. Maybe I don't have the bandwidth for affection, but like, you can't just sit over there not feeling good. I'd rather just talk about it so you can feel exactly. better and I can feel yes. better. Now we're both on the same page. Like you're not having a fit. Like we can like move through your emotional tantrum together. Yes. So you can feel lighter. Yes. And then we can go to bed feeling okay. Yes. Ah, oh, so good. So good, Ingrid. He teaches me a lot about I'm very emotional and mm-hmm. he is much more logical. So mm-hmm. And I'm open to the logic, but it's me always ends up wrestling with my emotions because I feel like the emotions happen to me Mm -hmm. and I have to be like, okay, don't be a ridiculous, crazy person. Like you can't let the emotions rule everything about you because that makes your life suck. But you also can't like squish them. You can't suppress them either. Yeah. So being able to express them to him without like, I don't know, it's just this interesting balance. I feel like I'm learning a lot about how much my emotions affect me, especially when I don't deal with them. Cause I'm always like, I feel like they're just, they're always overwhelming to me. I've always been like that. I'm just very emotional. So I'm just like, oh, it's just not the right time. It's just too much. No, you and have his, to be authentic. You have to be authentic. But then his authentic. reaction is always like, well, that's not just, well, let's just do it now. Why are you going to wait till you feel, then you're going to be crying while we're eating hamburgers like last time. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. what the fuck is going on? Why are you crying? And then nothing even happened. Like, you know, obviously, maybe not when I'm having a, the worst moment ever, but like, yeah, later in the day, obviously, you're still thinking about something to share it with me. It's not the longer you wait, the worse it's going to get. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Deal with it now, especially your Aries North Node. Deal with it now. Be mm-hmm. authentic. Be direct. But this energy of Sunday is just opening your heart, asking questions. Opening your heart can be really hard sometimes. I feel like I'm very open hearted, but sometimes there can still be a lot of fear with like sharing and maybe totally. being like rejected in some way. And that's, I feel like that's a lot of what's happening today on the Sunday is things are being shaken up in a way that is uncomfortable to your heart, but it's what is forcing you to open your heart. So when you're expressing it, it may be dramatic, it may not come out the way that you want or you hope or you intend, or you're not even thinking about it, and it just happens. And you're like, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. But it's what needs to happen in order for the energy to move. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott. You're welcome, For all Ingrid. of your insights. Yes, of course. And I will see you next week. And if you yes. haven't signed up for one of the classes. Yes, the basics the- of astrology. This Saturday, the 24th of June at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Go to the weekly trans. Yeah, the, the link is in the show notes. 
Yeah, go hang out with Scott. Astrology. Hang out with me. Yeah. Yes. It's going to be a good weekend. Yes. Awesome, Ingrid. Right. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Transit. Follow us on Instagram for daily updates about the planetary alignments and how to work with the energy. If this podcast is helping you navigate life more gracefully, please subscribe, rate us five stars, and share with your friends. If you're ready to go deeper, book a personal reading with Scott or sign up for his new moon full moon class at theweeklytransit.com. The Weekly Transit. 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 Transit.